last year. Uh, I just got this chair about two weeks ago, and I'm not entirely sure right now yet if I'm going to be keeping this chair, uh, which is why you still see these plastic protectors on it. I just wanted to be absolutely sure that I was going to keep the chair before I decided to just yank those all off. Uh, in case I need to return it, that way it just provides a little bit more protection and there's no chance of them denying the return because it got damaged or whatnot. So I don't know if you've done any research on this chair, but it is the current flagship chair in Herman Miller's lineup, which includes chairs like the, the Z2, the Sail, the Miro, Miro 2, and the Aeron. Uh, this chair costs as roughly twice as much as any of those. It starts at $1,100 and it scales all the way up to $1,700, $1,800. Whereas any of those other chairs, they hover around five to $600 starting price. But if you option any of those out, they also go up to well over 1000 as well. So yeah, it, it's kind of up to you. If you want to option one of those out, we're going to get a base version of the body or you can option that body out as well. The best thing to do, of course, if you can, is just to go into a showroom and just sit on them and just decide for yourself. Because there's people that prefer the Aeron or the Miro uh, over the body. But I think more often than not, most people that sit in the body prefer it to the others. So the uh, best thing to do if you can is just try it out for yourself. Now, it's, it's an expensive chair, but you kind of want ha you kind of have to think of it in terms of it being a long term investment in your health. Like for me, in my twenties, I was sitting on these generic leather chairs that you can get at big box stores, and I was slouching a lot, and it just killed my posture. And now that I'm in my thirties, it's like my back always hurts, and so I figured it was time for me to just splurge on a good chair. So I started doing my research and decided to just try this one. Uh, Herman Miller chairs come with 12 year warranties, so you know if you, if you take that, you take the cost divided by that, and you divide by how many hours you either work or play at your at your desk each day. Uh, it, it, it amounts to really just a couple of cents per day, I think. So you know you have to just kind of consider this sort of a purchase as a long term investment in your health. So, anyways. Let's start going over the chair itself. So the model I have here, it's uh, it's got the black balance fabric. It's got the white frame. It's got the titanium base and it has clear caster wheels. So for me, the the white base was a must have because the, this, the look of this chair is polarizing. You either like it or you don't, but I personally really love it. So I really wanted the spine the details of the spine and the back to stick out. Uh, so for me, the white was a must have. You can get it in black too, if you need something more subtle, such as if you're uh, using this in a workplace where all of your um, surrounding furniture is just subtle shades of black or gray, and you just need it to blend in, you can get it in black. But for me, I, I feel like, at least for home use, that just seems like such a waste because the spine is what the body's all about. As far as the base goes, I've read in some reviews that the black version of the base could be made out of plastic. So to be sure I was getting a metal base at least, I figured I'd offer the titanium base, which added nothing to the cost. Now if you decide to go for the polished aluminum base, that costs another $200 and that's really just a visual upgrade. So it's kind of up to you if you want to go for that. The clear caster wheels, it, I believe that adds $50 onto the cost. Uh, for me, I figured I'd throw it in. And, and it, it, they do look really nice on the chair in, in life, when, once you see it in person. Uh, I, I, so to me, it was definitely a worthy upgrade compared to the generic uh, all black casters that the chair normally comes with. Uh, as far as the fabric goes, they, they have, Herman Miller has two options for them body. By default, it comes with what's called the rhythm fabric. The upgraded fabric is called Balance. It's If you look at picture comparisons, it's roughly three times as thick as the Rhythm fabric. And 
if you read reviews on this chair and even myself having sat on it now this is definitely a firm chair uh, my first impression when I sat on the chair was it was almost it was like sitting on a bench truth be told uh, it's not I mean not quite that hard but it, it, it's definitely firm I mean some of the other Herman Miller chairs like the Aeron which I did own before and probably the Miro which have they both have mesh seats those definitely have more give than than the body so it's a very firm chair and I figured to be safe I should upgrade to the balance fabric to give it the maximum amount of cushioning available but you know realistically now that I've seen it in person it's I don't think it makes I don't think it makes that big of a difference I mean I haven't tried the rhythm fabric but realistically if you look at it it's only like a fourth of about a fourth of an inch thick maybe and that's how thick it is on the back and the seat pad so it's questionable whether or not it makes a difference and it is it does add two hundred dollars to the cost so I mean if you can if you can again it's one of those things where if you could compare it in person that that would be the best thing to do um, I mean another thing too is is that the rhythm fabric is made in the US whereas the balance fabric is made in Italy so you pay a little bit more for that luxury thing now I will say that visually the balance fabric is pretty unique looking it, it's it's more porous than the rhythm uh, you can you can see these they're pretty big holes throughout the fabric so Hermione Miller claims that it is uh, it does offer better circulation compared to the rhythm fabric um, I don't know if that's really true or not but visually it is I think nicer the rhythm fabric is a denser material, so it, it looks similar to the type of fabric you probably see on your typical office chair that has a cloth seat. This actually looks unique. Um, and the holes give it a nice sort of, I almost want to say rough, but it's rough in a nice way, but there is, it gives it a bit of a texture if you rub your skin across it. It's definitely not silky smooth, but you know, it, it gives it a unique texture that I haven't really felt with other fabric, with other types of fabrics on office chairs before. So, kind of you, you kind of have to weigh it yourself if you want to go for this or not for comfort. And I think it's worth going for it, even just for the visual appeal, I suppose. Um, but let me assess the fabric. Uh, let's go over the other features of this chair. So this, these handles here in the front, they're your seat depth adjustment. You have this clear joystick here, which is your seat height adjustment. You have this knob here, which is uh, your your seat recline, your your back reclining tension adjustment knob. This knob here adjusts your lumbar support. The, the arm, the arms can be raised or lowered using these two trigger buttons underneath here, and the arms, the entire arm themselves can be yanked side to side to adjust your arm width. And then lastly, you have this paddle back here. This adjusts your your uh, how far you can lean back. It, it's a limiter and it can lock you upright or lock you in up to four different stages or maybe three rather because you have, because one of them is just for locked upright so going more in depth on each one so your, your seat depth adjustment is just these two handles you're supposed to just kind of lift your legs up a little and then just take it pull it up yank it upward and then just roll it out or in. So to me this feels like a bit of a cop out because with most other ergonomic cast chairs out there made by other companies their seat depth adjustment tends to uh, involve the entire base of the seat moving forward and back on rails which I would imagine uses a lot more parts uh, but it, it feels a lot more solid than something like this. I mean, all this is really doing is just it's just rolling the cloth up underneath the seat. If you look at it, that's all it's really doing. Uh, 
Uh, and plus, it's it's not a it's not a very precise system. It's hard to tell when I've actually lifted it properly, and if it's and, and also where where you know, your individual adjustments are. It, it's just not very precise. And I've had situations before where even like now I think where I lift it and I start pulling, and it really feels like just one side's being adjusted and not both sides. So not that this. Not, not a very precise system, sort of janky. Um, in fact, I mean, they say you're, you're supposed to pull it up first before pulling it forward, but I mean, I'm not pulling it at all upward, and it's already going. So, yeah, again, not very precise. Also, visually, you know, I mean, if they had done something else where, like, they could have integrated the controls elsewhere in this chair, could have visually made this, I think, more appealing versus now you have these two obvious handles sticking out in front of the chair. So, yeah, hopefully they could do a better job on this if they were making it body too. Um, the seat height is adjusted by this, by this joystick here. Um, the best, I mean, so some people have, some people have had complaints with this where they, 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 they pull it and they, they feel like the chair's not going anywhere. And it, the problem is, is that they're probably not pulling the stick hard enough because you really do need to max out. You need to max out the stick in its, where it's seated in here. So, you know, don't be afraid to basically yank it all the way up or, all, or push it all the way down. Um, so if you do that, And you can also, you don't necessarily have to push it down to go down, you can actually pull it up to have it go down. You can also push it down to have it go down. So either way works, but the key is, is you really have to make sure you pull it all the way up or push it all the way down. Uh, anything in between is not going to make it move anywhere. Uh, so again, this, this, this knob here is this... Uh, Reclining tension knob. If you move it forward, it increases your tension. If you move it back towards you, it decreases the tension. Uh, now, one of the great things I love about ergonomic chairs in general is their reclining system. I will say that it's a true infinite system where it, it, there's, there, it's guaranteed that there's something for everybody in there. Uh, like most big box store chairs, even at their loosest setting, you still tend to require some leg muscles and back muscles to keep the chair reclined. And that's just not the case with perimeter chairs. You can get them to be so tight that you know you really end up having to use leg muscles to move to to even to the point where you you'd probably be lifting whole chair even off the ground. And you can make it so loose where, you know, if you aren't careful you probably have an accident. So you probably go like this or something. Um, so you, you, there's a really wide range in there that you can adjust the, 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 the back recline tension to. And it's great in my case, you know, I, I hardly need any force. I kind of just balance myself in the recline position. It just doesn't need any, any, it just doesn't need any additional work from me to recline. So, so that part's really great. Um, the chair and the, um, the, the arms here, okay, so this button, it raises it, it lowers it, and one thing I should note is, with, is that the arms in their default state here, they kind of rattle, uh, so again, the precision and tolerance isn't that great, but uh, to be fair, this is an issue I've felt with a lot of other office chairs as well, uh, even other high-end ones, where the arms just for whatever reason they'll rattle. They just, I mean, it seems like nobody can get this part precise. And maybe it's because if it's too precise, you just won't be able to move at all, so it is what it is. Um, the, the, the top is just, it's coated with vinyl, nothing special. I mean, I would have hoped or thought that for this price they could have coated it with some kind of leather, genuine leather, but I mean, it's just it's just your typical vinyl padding. 
but it's soft. And then if you put your elbow on it like this, it doesn't feel like it's gonna scuff up your elbow or your arm. So it's it's smooth and it's it's well padded. Now, in, now one of the biggest complaints with this with this chair is the arms and the way the width adjustment works because you have to take the whole thing and you have to move the entire arm in and out like this. And so if you there's and there's just no way to lock it. So if you were to try to grab this arm to move the whole chair across the room or something, it's it, you're guaranteed to move it out of position like this. Uh, it also makes it very difficult to to precisely adjust it. I think like more often than not, you try to adjust it to, to, to just one extra position out or in, and you're probably gonna more often than not overshoot, and you end up adjusting it by two spots. But a trick I discovered to help with that is if you take the arm, just grab the little arm and kind of lift it up a little, just apply a little upward pressure before you lift it, you'll feel it drop into place much better. And there's a total of four positions you can move it into. So if, if you ever have trouble adjusting these arms, give that a try. It, it definitely helps me out. Just lift it up and then you kind of drop it into the next spot. Now, one thing also to note about the arms is when you do adjust them outward like this, you're, you're literally adjusting the angle that the, the, the top of the pad um, sits at. So instead of being flat, as you move it out, you're literally moving it outward at a curve like this, which can ultimately mean that your arm's gonna be out at an, at an angle it's going to be kind of sloped. Um, I don't think that design, design decision is that great. Um, because most other companies, when they design arms that move, they'll make it where just the top of the pad can slide forward, back, left, and right. Uh, so this, this seems, again, like a really janky mechanism, which is not that great. Technically, when you, I mean, if you move it all the way out and then you, you adjust the, the height upward, it's, well, it actually brings the, it curves it back in a little. But again, I mean, that combination, with that particular combination, I don't think there's any guarantee that you can match your particular height adjustment needs. Like, just depending on how high your desk is, you might not be able to find the perfect combination with that alone. So. So yeah, I don't think that that part is that great either. And then let's see. So this is the, the, the tilt limiter. So if you pull all the way out, you're locked. But even if you're locked, you, you, there's still quite a bit of rattling to the chair. So it's not, you're not really that well locked. And again, it's a precision and tolerance issue. You can counteract it by increasing your tilt tension, but then you kind of ruin the tilt tension. So well, it's one of those things you kind of have to live with, with this chair. If you take it down one step, it's you get about six inches of decline. Of decline. Uh, you go down one more, and that it's probably twice that. Feels like it's twelve inches probably. And you go down one more, and it's full recline depth. I actually use it pretty often. I mean, sometimes I feel like sitting more upright, other times I feel like just going all the way out. So it's, it's surprisingly a good feature. Uh, and I, I use it a lot. Okay, so now let's talk about the most important feature of the body, which is this lumbar support, which, if you ask me, should really be labeled to for shoulder support adjustment. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because of the relationship of how this entire thing moves and how it relates to your back. So if you, if you consider that, that this part right here is 
this up this upper shoulder area of the chair, which is up here. I consider my knuckles being the lumbar support area, which is somewhere down here. The way it works is when it's in its loosest setting, you'll have the upper shoulder area be relatively flat. And then you'll have your lumbar support area and it's what is what is it what is what, what is the ready the maximum position of it? So as you increase the tension, what your ashes is doing is it starts to go like this. Your shoulder area starts to curve forward and move forward, and then your lumbar support actually starts to flatten. So if anything, as you increase the lumbar support, you're actually decreasing it. Uh, whereas with most other tastures, if you increase the lumbar support, you're usually increasing like a piece of something, like a foam or usually a piece of foam. You cause it usually causes this piece of foam to stick out more and more against your lumbar area, the lumbar curve. But with this chair, you're actually decreasing it, so it's it's kind of a the the funky it's a funky system. And that, that's actually the reason why you'll see a lot of reviews out there where some people say that they try to adjust it over and over and over and they just can't seem to find a comfortable spot. It's because of that relationship. Um, I think if Herman Miller had just broken up the adjustment to where you could independently adjust the top area and the bottom area, I think m much more people would have been able to find a perfect fit for them. But as it is, it moves as one piece. So. So in terms of how to adjust it, um, a lot of people complain that Herman Miller's instructions on this is kind of vague. So uh, this is how you this is how they tell you to adjust it. So you start off by cranking it all the way up to its maximum tension, and it, it works just like it works just like the the recline tension knob. You move it like this. the tension. And it's got a pretty big range so you have to turn it for quite a while. And what you should be noticing is you should be you should be able to see that the back is the upper back is slowly moving forward. So you just slow it and just keep turning and turning and turning it until it's maxed out. Also tell you, make sure you lock the seat in its upright position first, and then you place. You just make sure you place your entire back against the chair. And so in this position, my my upper back feels like it's being sort of hunched forward. And if I kept my head straight, my my line of sight would be pointed at the floor. So from there, you making sure you keep your back completely planted against the chair back. Now you start slowly adjusting it backward. You just keep leaning on it until you feel that your line of sight is looking straight ahead. It's about there. The other thing you should be able to feel if you're in a proper properly supported position is you should be able to have your shoulders sort of tucked back and you should be able to sit sort of barrel chested where your chest is out and shoulders back so this would be sort of a correct posture uh, so yeah that's how you're supposed to adjust the lumbar support they also say that if you have a relatively flat lumbar curve near the bottom of your back to leave it more, uh, to increase the tension more. And if you have a relatively curved back, you should decrease the tension more. So in my case, my back is pretty curved. Uh, so for me, it, it, it actually, it does feel better for me if I have the tension down to almost nothing in my case. Um, but that, that's something, that's something that you pretty much just have to play with and see. Um, but 
that, that procedure was the proper way to do the adjustment according to what Herman Miller says we should do. So I think that's it for the chair features. So I guess let's just go over some pros and cons that I've found with this chair. Um, one pro that I really like is, is that this is the first chair I've had where I can truly sit in this upright posture for an hour or more and it doesn't feel fatiguing. Like with most other chairs, you, you, you try to sit upright like this for an hour, you, you, you start to feel muscle fatigue somewhere and eventually you start wanting to slouch because your muscles are tired from holding your back upright all the time. With this chair, that just doesn't happen. It, I mean, it, it's actually more uncomfortable to slouch in this chair, if not just downright impossible. Um, like when I just just when I just tried to slouch just now, it felt really awkward and just weird. Um, so this is the best way to sit in this chair, which is I mean, which is a good thing because you do want to maintain this proper posture, um, and it, it just feels natural, you know. You, the, the, um, you know, the shoulder back, barrel chest position, it just feels right. The other great thing is, is that, I mean, they say that this chair is really meant for you to just to recline in. So it, it's, it's an ideal chair if you like to recline. Um, and one of the reasons for it, I think, is again, this is the only chair I've, I've been in where even in the recline state, you s it still maintains that whole upright posture. Um, just because you're reclining, it, it doesn't cause you to start feeling like you want to slouch or whatever. Um, even so, even as you recline, I mean, this feels great. This doesn't feel natural, and you can you can stay like this again for an hour or more, and it feel, it just feels it feels right. Um, other thing that, that I like about this too is um, th this is the this is the only chair where I've I've sat reclined like this for an hour or more and I don't feel the need for a headrest. Um, other chairs within an hour or so because because of how you start getting muscle fatigue and you start slouching your shoulders forward or pushing your head forward to to maintain to maintain your um, your line of sight. Um, with those chairs, I, I tend to start wanting a headrest on them. But with this chair, it's Herman Miller designed it so that you shouldn't need a headrest, and it's because of how it just maintains the correct posture throughout your back. So yeah, with this, you just haven't felt the need for for a headrest. Um, another cool thing too is, is that the, the the back of this chair really hugs your back. Um, when you when you have it dialed in, it just it just curves and just hugs every aspect of your back. This is unlike other chairs where it's like the back the upper back might be sloped really backward, and so when you recline, it, it's, a lot of these chairs just don't ever touch your upper back, which again is why you start having feeling that need to push your shoulders forward and your and your and your neck and head forward. To kind of maintain that balance, but with this one you can fully rest your upper back against the chair, and it, it maintains that contact all the time with your back. Um, what else? I guess this is then. Oh yeah. So Herman Miller promotes this chair as being a chair that that keeps you moving, um, and that that's healthy for your back to constantly keep moving. And so one of the really cool things with this chair is it, because of the way the back works and you know, that, that big spine back there, it's, it's just it's super flexible. So you can do some really crazy stretches on this chair and use it as a pivot point for that. So to demonstrate, so here I am, you know, stretching my shoulder backward. And this feels great right now. I mean, <laughs> and then you have to twist it aside. And then you can you can really recline in this chair. Like so. You really bend yourself back. And so here's side profile.
interesting. And so you, you can probably see that spine vector moving, so it's it, it's not it's not there just for looks. It's it definitely it's a it's a functional part. The pivots at the bottom and at the top. So and yeah, this is one of the few chairs where even in the most upright loft position you can still kind of flex your upper back backward. So you're not entirely confined even in the upright position. So yeah, that, that's definitely one of the the thing the big things about the body is this crazy flexibility. Uh, so let's talk about some cons, I guess. Um, one con would be that actually before I get into one more thing for the one more thing for pro also is um, the seat edge has no hard. I like the Aeron, which a lot of people complained about. It had a hard plastic lip. This sure really has no hard edges at all. So if you want, you could use this like this long term. And you probably wouldn't really feel any long term irritation or pain. Also, um, yeah, I haven't, I mean, I haven't felt much of a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a firm, a firm feeling seat pan, but I mean, you can, you can definitely, I mean, the, the way they designed it was there's these little hexagons underneath that act as sort of individual springs. So it's like an independent suspension for your entire bottom. And I mean, I haven't felt any fatigue at all um, sitting on the bottom. It, it feels, you know, feels great. I don't get any numb spots, no pain, no nothing from the, from the seat pan here. So yeah, that, that's, that's another pro. Um, cons. So I mean, a lot of this chair, unfortunately, is made out of plastic. Um, so if, if, you, if you move around a lot in it, it definitely creaks. And s there's some squeaks here and there. Um, so not that great for a chair that costs as well over a thousand dollars. But you know, Herman is trying to be really green and really uh, environmentally friendly, so. They try to build their chairs out of as much recyclable materials as possible. Um, probably, um, probably the biggest issue for me, and which I'm not sure might end up being a deal breaker, is is these individual arms back here. Um, and again, this is a pretty common complaint out there. So, this is mo this is probably the one thing you should pay the most attention to, if as to whether or not the chair is going to work out for you or not. So these individual arms, they're just they're just capped off at the end with a hard piece of round plastic. And you know, if you sit in it for about five minutes, you're not gonna really feel them. But you start sitting in it for half an hour to an hour, you'll start footing all these little individual pinpricks up against your back. And so, you know, after 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 half an hour I start you start, I start getting really fidgety, and after an hour, if I try to stand up and walk away from the chair, it feels like my whole back's been bruised by these little pinpricks. And so, if anything, that's the one thing about this chair that I'm really not sure about, and it could end up being a deal breaker for me. So, so you really want to, you really want to consider this uh, if you if you're deciding on buying this chair, because. Um, this could also be the exact same deal breaker for you as well. Um, but other than that, there's not, I mean, everything else about this chair I pretty much love. I mean, it is, it's definitely very ergonomic. It keeps my back in a really good position. Keeps it nice and straight. And I don't feel any fatigue long term, um, at least in terms of my posture. But you know, in terms of comfort, it's a different story because of those little pinpricks. And that's where I think if, they, if Herman Miller had just made the back padding just a little thicker, it would have been just just perfect, I think, if they had just done that. Um, the, well, I guess another con is, is that this is a very heavy chair. Um, it weighs 60 pounds. So 
it's not that easy to move around. The, I, I mean, I don't, I'm on carpet, so I definitely have to kind of, I have to really, like, nudge it to, to get it to move anywhere at all. So if you're trying to make just small adjustments to scoot it up against your desk or whatever, it's, it's pretty tough to do that. So I guess that's another con of it. But, let's see. I guess is a, okay. This is a pro, but a lot of people are concerned when they first see this chair that I mean because of how narrow the back is here, whether or not it's actually going to properly support their backs. Um, this was a concern for me as well when I first was looking at it, but in reality, it's it's actually it works where they say that it, it offers your arms full freedom. So you can, I mean, it gives your shoulders a lot, just a lot more freedom to twist and turn and move. So, as it turns out, that's actually, it's actually a pro that they made the back so narrow. And, and it's actually a, a really good design decision compared to other chairs that have a bigger back area. And then it sort of locks you in and you can't go anywhere as a result. So, you still get plenty of upper back support because of how this part is it's sort of it's sort of rounded inward so it, it hugs your shoulders really really well so if you're concerned about the narrow back being you know not being able to support your back I wouldn't worry about that at all um, it supports at least my back it supports my back really well um, and then as a reference I'm five feet nine so you can kind of see exactly how high up it goes against my back and so the back works for me um, I think that's it for you know the pros and cons of this chair uh, I guess also I, I should let you know that if you're interested in purchasing any Hermes metal product that you should ideally wait for their two annual sales um, one happens in the summer towards the end of May and it goes to about the beginning of June and then the second one happens around Black Friday, uh, I think towards the end of November, um, into the beginning of December. And it goes for, I think, about two weeks. So the summer sale this year was when I bought this chair. And when they put, I mean, Herman Miller is one of those dealers where, is one of those manufacturers where um, the price is pretty much the same everywhere you go. So any dealer you go, it's, I mean, when they put, when they put their stuff on sale, victory. Um, when they put their their stuff on sale, all the other dealers will follow at the same time, and um, all the dealers will also put their, their items on sale as well at the at the exact same time. And the the, the amount that the sale is for is it's fifteen percent off. So on a chair like this, you're looking at a good you know hundred two hundred bucks off. So if you can, you should definitely just wait for the two annual sales to pick up this chair or even any other Herman Miller product. Um, it's it's fifty percent off the entire catalog. Uh, in my case, um, I decided to order it directly from Herman Miller because they have a flat rate fee of twenty nine dollars, and I'm in Hawaii, so twenty nine bucks for flat rate ship for a flat rate shipping fee um, for a chair that weighs 60 pounds that's fully assembled and comes in a gigantic box yeah 29 bucks for me was a steal and that's actually what pushed me over the edge to order it with most of the other dealers um if you're in a continental us they'll they'll, they'll have free shipping so um if you want to save on the shipping you might want to just order from a dealer but if you're but if, if you know if you're in Hawaii or Alaska, I would say just buy it straight from Herman Miller because the $29 in flat rate shipping is a steal. With the other dealers, uh, you, you don't get flat rate shipping to Hawaii or Alaska and I would imagine the shipping costs as well over $200 at that point. So so to me that that that, that, that kind of um, was what made me pull the trigger on this chair really more than anything. Um, so other than that, I think that's it. Um, again, this is a review of the Herman Miller Embody Ergonomic Task Chair. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave it below. And um, thank you for watching.